Hi, I'm Dean with Old English Outfitters, and today we're going to be talking about a range belt setup. Now, I say range belt uh, because it's a little bit of a general term. You could say GP belt, you could say war belt, uh, you could say any number of different things, but the idea for what we want to set this up for is general use. Uh, with one belt setup, ideally, you should be able to shoot a pistol match, go to the range and train with your buddies, or deal with a serious situation because you're going to need pretty similar equipment in all of those situations and a basic setup like this is going to get you as much functionality as you can without carrying an entire plate carrier's worth of stuff on a belt. There's a few ways to do this. Uh, the first one I'm just going to go over. We don't have an example of it here but it's my least favorite. Is it going to be a direct thread on belt. So you have a rigid belt and you have pouches that you just put through in between the loops of your pants and loop it all onto you. That tends to work well if you don't want to buy a belt system. It does hold it very well onto your waistline. However, you have to reassemble your belt every time you would have put it on and off. Now, all the options that we have here have the, uh, the advantage of time. They're very easy to put on yourself and get ready to do whatever you're going to do. So we need that quick into action, whatever. I think that that's a little bit preferable and you don't really lose anything going to uh, a quick attachment belt. So uh, two examples of what I would say is the more secure way to do a quick attach belt is going to be an inner and outer belt system. So here we have a Core Essentials battle belt. So this is a rigid outer belt that has some molly rows on it. And uh, what you can do is attach a variety of things to those molly rows. Uh, we have a Safariland QLS system, fork and plate, and a Safariland holster here. Uh, and we have pretty much all the equipment that you would need. We're going to go over the equipment a little bit more in depth for each particular setup in a moment. Uh, this here we have a defense mechanisms belt. Uh, they curate full setup. They do patches, belt, inner, outer. Uh, they can do a lot of different attachment surfaces. So they make a very good product. So the final option we have for what we would call a quick attach belt is a traditional battle belt. So this here is a company, uh, T-Rex Arms used to make these battle belts. I'm not sure they even still produce them anymore because they have gone through several iterations of that design. Uh, but for a battle belt, you do not have an inner belt. Though it is capable of accepting one, it doesn't work really well. Uh, and for that, what you're going to do is just have your normal belt. You cinch it way down so it's tight on you. And then put this over your pants, your shirt, whatever you've got, and cinch it way down as well. Because the inside is rubberized, it should stay in place. And if you have it loose enough, you can put it over an overgarment. It doesn't always work as well. You have to cinch it down kind of uncomfortably tight, but it is capable of doing that. Now, as far as setup goes, you're going to see a pretty similar form factor for all of these different belts. Uh, we're going to have holster for our secondary firearm, uh, some sort of magazine pouch for carrying spare ammunition, some administration area, something you could put whatever you want in, and that looks a few different ways, uh, and then some sort of tourniquet, because no matter what situation we described, competition, range time, or a serious scenario, you should have some way to stop a severe arterial bleed in one of your limbs. Uh, ideally, you would have this tourniquet in addition to a med kit and some other stuff, but let's not get into the weeds of full kit. We're just talking about range belts today. So for this here, we have a Safari Land holster, most of us will run a retention holster of some kind. Clearing retention, I think, is a mandatory skill. So uh, for all of these, even for competition, I have shot competition with a Safari Land, and it did not really make my time suffer at all, especially if it's just an ALS. A quick detach system on the ALS called the QLS is going to get you the ability to run multiple firearms without having to completely reconfigure. Uh, moving back in the center of my back, I have a tourniquet. This is a ratcheting tourniquet that works quite well. And then uh, further back from there, we have a dump pouch. And I use that for a variety of things. I like a collapsible dump pouch, something you can police up and fold tight so it's not constantly hanging down as this big bucket. But with this, I can do a lot of things. I can have an optic adjustment tool, a marker for marking my hits and misses. I can have spare ammunition. If you don't have any facility to carry shotgun ammunition, in a pinch, you can put shotgun shells in here and reload shotgun from a dump pouch. Dump pouch is a very versatile thing to do. I would just say that having one that is policeable that you can package up is mandatory. Then we have some magazine pouches. These are STAC pouches. Uh, most of us use STAC. We find that they work the best and look the best for anything that's offered on the market. And they're one of kind of the middle affordable ones. You'd think for having the best pouch, it'd be the most expensive, but that's not really the case. Rifle ammunition, 
and pistol ammunition carried on the belt. Uh, theory behind that, say you are running a full plate carrier, a full rig, you would like to be able to ditch that plate carrier and still have ammunition for both of your firearms on your person. So if you're gonna ditch your armor set, we should have something for pistol and something for rifle still on us. And then I have like a Neomag tack trap here. This is just for gloves or ear pro. It's a nice little aluminum piece that's a hook. I can just hook whatever I want to on there. Something to put my scare, spare gear on whenever I'm not actually using it. From here, we have our cameraman Tristan's belt. Now this is a pretty good example of somebody with cross-eye dominance. We have his pistol in a right-hand draw configuration, an admin pouch forward of the hips that is accessible for whatever he wants to put in there. Magazine for his rifle is set up for left-hand draw. Another administration pouch. Put a grenade in there or something if you want. Moving to the other side of the belt, we have something for gloves. And then we have pistol ammunition for a right-handed draw. So drawing the mag with the left hand. There's another pistol mag pouch here that he's just got a big fat sharpie in for marking hits and misses. And then we have multi-tool light and once again, a tourniquet, okay? Something very important that you should have whenever you are shooting a firearm. Now the final belt, again back to that battle belt. This one is the most bare bones setup that we have available. We have a holster here. Now I wanna pause on this holster. This was sent to us by US Duty Gear for testing and evaluation. If you're looking for a Safari Land, but Safari Land does not make a holster for your gun, odds are US Duty Gear makes one for it. They are a great company and their holster works really well and is really well thought out. So thank you to them for sending it to us. Uh, this is a US Duty Gear holster for a Walther PDP. Forward of that, once again, forward of the hips, easily accessible in equipment. We have an admin pouch. And then on the other side, we have, once again, STAC pouches for pistol and rifle. And then this here, policeable dump pouch. That's what one looks like when it's all folded up. Once again, anything you can't fit in the other pouches you have, you can put into a dump pouch. So looking at this, we have a lot of different configurations, but all of them are good for those three things that we mentioned. They can fit well into pretty much any scenario without changing anything you have on there. If you are going to be shooting a, uh, uh, we'll say you're going to be shooting a pistol match. Well, STAC mag carriers, you can fit pistol mags in a rifle mag carrier and they have good retention. Uh, you can run it for any type of tactical scenario that you might find yourself in, pistol rifle class or anything else more serious. And just for shooting at the range with your buddies, having your kit the same, practicing how you play for any of your range sessions is always a good idea. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. We do have an Instagram, at OE Outfitters. Go over there, check it out. If you like what you see, please give us a follow there as well. Last thing, we are coming up on our... 100,000 subscriber mark, and we are going to be doing a giveaway. All right, guys, once again, for our 100,000 subscriber giveaway, we're going to be doing a range belt setup, complete with a core belt, some good mag pouches, a dump pouch, and a holster. And that'll be the configuration of your choice. So once we get a winner, we're going to contact you and get it set up exclusively for you for your gun. We are going to be using a, a sign-up service, a third-party service, so the link will be in the description below this video. And we're going to have that running until we reach 100,000, however quick or long that takes. There's going to be a lot of ways to get entries, so click the link in the description and sign up.